honest, we're just here to have fun. It may not seem that way lately, but we're gonna get it done. So join us for this here podcast. <laughs> that music is so pleasant. That's very nice. Bum ba da ba ba ba. Man, that was all I. That was exactly what my whole topic was for the podcast. So you love that. On to what do you got, Joe? That what really you tickled too? you. <laughs> yeah, it did. <laughs> it really did. I didn't feel tickled. I thought it was just sweet. Uh, da, 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 very da. sweet, but also like <laughs> the juxtaposition. Very, very aware of the, yeah of the um, just the pleasantness of the chords and like the strumming. And the like, dun da da dun, mm-hmm. uh, with the horrible, horrible sounds in the beginning it was really throwing mm-hmm. me off. The- what were the horrible? <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. The here, I'll play it again. <laughs> yeah, those sounds. Yeah. <laughs> it's like Jason Mraz on a bad night, <laughs> just like ah. That's never happened, Joe. You god dang know it. You love him. There's never been a bad yeah, night. Yeah, I've been revisiting a little Jason Mraz. You don't think lately? Jason Jason Mraz has ever had a bad night? I'm sure he has. Obviously. Yeah. Oh, just the musical aspect. He hasn't had him. a bad night that Elliot's seen. I was being sarcasm. At all. I hope you never Zero. see a bad night from that man. <laughs> uh, hey guys, welcome to the Valley Cast. Um, we're gonna try to bring some topics to the table this time. <laughs> Except Joe asked us to do something last night and was like, for the podcast tomorrow, you guys should do this thing. And I was like, okay. And, and then I got way it. too high, fell asleep, <laughs> and then woke up this morning and had too many things to do and forgot about it. I think it, it's totally I fine. I think I can I can bring up the same for you, the Ellie? concept of it. Exactly the same. Yeah. <laughs> like word for word. <laughs> I think I can bring up the, the the what I was considering, and we can just talk through it anyways. Um, okay. It's a slight gamification of a topic, but not really at all. Um, we'll jump into that in a second. First of all, Elliot's going to talk about our live shows, live shows, live shows, guys. live shows, live shows, live shows, live shows, live shows. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> uh, we have a small tour coming up in uh, January, and there are links in the description of this video. Uh, and uh, we're going to San Francisco Bam. for Sketch Fest. That's going to be with the Chris and Paul show from Bam. Bring the Fun. And we're very excited to see them again, as uh, as well as with Morgan J from Bring the funny that's mm-hmm. gonna be real cool uh and then from there we're going to places like denver salt lake city tacoma and spokane and then uh spokane, spokane <clears throat> sorry and uh, i know i do it every time if you would like to see us it's we're going literally it's all in one week so it's going to be very crazy uh kevin is going to come along with us and uh he's going to film and shyly say yeah. hi to people and it's a chance for us to reconnect with you guys and also yeah. perform weird dumb different stuff with you some and Q&A hang out. on the on the stage and stuff yes, improv we're, it's we're not uh we're not opposed oftentimes to going out after the show and doing some karaoke and if whatnot there's any if time any time <laughs> yeah. uh, so our tour is not very... guaranteeing it but this is some you short never know. turnaround uh, this, yeah link in the description we hope to see you soon thanks yeah nice work elliot Bunk, bunk. Uh, if you missed it on Friday, we posted another Your Show, so go back and check that out. Uh, it's got Movie Movie Game in it, the return of with the a- uh, action movie movie game uh, featuring, starring the one and only Anthony Carboni. Ooh, that's a good boy. I like Anthony yeah. Carboni. And speaking of good boys, we also had Whitney and uh, Will on the couch. So. I'm sad I couldn't be on the Anthony Carboni podcast because I had a lot of really. Oh, we didn't do an Anthony Carboni oh, podcast. Oh, yeah, that's yet. right. I thought we you were going to. You will be to. on it. Yeah, we're doing yeah. that. Great. I got some That'll gotcha questions for him. Where's the um, cat? <laughs> now that uh, we've talked about that and you've talked about that, Steve, can you just give announcements that are total lies and not yes, true at all? Absolutely. Yeah. Guys, uh, it, starting in January, the Valley Folk is going to become an all-soul funk band, and we're going to be performing in coffee shops all mm-hmm. across North America. So yeah. you'll be able to see us in Sacramento yep. and uh, Brazil, San Francisco, mm-hmm. Brazil. And some Australia. And Australia. Yeah, and it's going to be great. We've been really practicing. Elliot's killing the harmonies. Thank you. And uh, Thank you. I think everyone's going <laughs> to yeah. love it. I think yeah. you guys are going to love it. All original songs, no covers. Mm-hmm. That's true. We're also going to be on that uh to tail to jump onto the tail yeah. end of that, we're also going to be releasing our Valley Float folk. Jeez, Valley the Floats. Valley Float. It is. You're it's excited. the Valley. It's Float. a float in the Macy's. Yep. 
And parade. We're not in this year's Macy's parade that just happened. So we're going to retroactively go back. No, the Macy's New Year's Eve parade. Yeah, <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna retroactively go back and debut our our float. So uh, you ready for the Valley float, Steve? You broke into the vault recently yes, I of did. future news, uh, yes. world events, cataclysmic yeah. events. Um, apocalyptic events that might be happening yeah. uh, as a result of, uh, you know, sort of the world col colliding. Yeah. What exactly have you heard and what can people look forward to in terms of planning their lives? And do they need to get sure. into a bunker now or later? Well, you know, there is a lot of really interesting potential near apocalyptic incidences, but... Can I'm, you name when well, and what Well, I'd they love are? to, but I'm actually like really distracted by what's happening to Kanye the Third mm. at the oh. holo at the Hologram Dorito Awards. Um, he announced that he was going to be <laughs> <laughs> Hologram Dorito Awards. <laughs> he said that he he announced that he was going to be um, marrying uh, the the CGI Cindy Lauper. That makes sense. Can oh, we actually rewind amazing. a little bit? Are the Hologram Dorito Awards an award show for music that is just sponsored by, or are these the actual Hologram Dorito Awards where we are awarding the people that have designed the best hologram Doritos? Well, actually, Joe, I'm glad you asked. In the year 2025, not uh, far down the way, <laughs> Doritos develops a new flavor called Hologram Doritos. Okay. And they blow everyone's minds. And uh, basically what it looks like is a hologram chip. Uh -huh. And it's really like a new dust that they created that really, that just kind of sparkles with the light. It's kind of like, it was a, it really was like a marketing ploy. It didn't quite work out. Mm. But what ended up happening was is some crazy students like at MIT or something, developed a real hologram oh. Dorito. Yeah. And then they partnered with Doritos, and by the year 2035, uh -huh. the Hologram Dorito Awards celebrates uh, accolades for technology, meeting with branding, like uh, for got fast you. food corporations got and stuff. You, oh, so you. it's like a brand deal award kind of deal. Yes. That makes sense, because yeah. they're like an up-and-coming thing. Right, oh. and it's also sponsored by Doritos. And so. why wouldn't Kanye the third be? It's, it sounds like it's the place that you want to be, because he's probably... You you know, investing in a bunch right. of different technologies at that point. Right. You know, diversifying his portfolio. So, of course, he's going to be at the awards. Um, in the future, has the Valley Folk uh, itself made any headlines? That no, are... no. It doesn't last. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, where's, where's the cat? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, anyway. Uh, that's <laughs> Sorry. great. How you guys great. doing? Good. That was good. Got that some topics? Today's a, today's a good day. Today's Today feels good. Um, yeah, I was listening to holiday music because when it's this time of the year, a lot of stations on Sirius just turn into holiday music stations. It. There's mm -hmm. like four different buttons in our car right it's now. one of my favorite that. things. Mm -hmm. And my wife listens to it nonstop. And uh, favorite things came on. Raindrop down, rolling, then we can go getting kettles. By the way, bright copper kettles? Come on now. I don't know any of those lyrics, so I don't know what you're talking about. You don't know All I know is these are a few of my Yeah, raindrops on roses and whiskers on kittens, bright copper kettles and warm woolen mittens, brown paper packages tied up with strings. Everyone, these are a few of my favorite things. Wow, that's yeah. That song is deep in the Christmas playlist. Yeah, I don't yeah, think I mean, is it Christmas. It's not song? even a Christmas song, but it gets associated with it. Like I remember singing it oh, in yeah. like, music classes around Christmas. They'd oh, because like, they'll do the na 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 yeah, I think da, I saw da, the song da, da, da. performed at like Disney World. Many, oh, that's many, nice. Many, many years ago, Disney World would Mickey's. do a lot of those. Do you know if they're? Yeah, I won't go into it. I don't want to segue. You can segue. Steve, do you know if they're doing? Steve and I were just talking about the Imagineering series outside, and uh, on Disney Plus. Yeah, mm. and do you know if they're doing Mickey's Very Merry Christmas still? I actually don't know. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. Wait, what is Mickey? What been is that? It, it's a it's a huge holiday celebration at the Magic Kingdom. Yeah. But is it like the parade? Do they just uh, like they the do a special parade? parade? But it's like yeah. a limited. It's like Halloween Horror Nights where they, <laughs> oh, it's, oh, it's oh, not as many people. Right, 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 they right, give out cookies and hot chocolate. All oh, night. they do that I think here they too. They do do it. Yeah, in, yeah. at least in Disneyland. I'm just curious. Yeah, yeah, I didn't know. Dude, that's some magical shit. Yeah, and they put snow everywhere. Yes, mm -hmm. there, it snow. snows. Yeah, just fun. And anyway. the castle has like 
Christmas. It has like uh, snow on it and Christmas lights, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. they do. They go all out. So you're listening um, to holiday. Yeah. Music. So, anyways, like bright copper kettles and stuff like that. I was just thinking, like, that's not anybody's favorite things. Also, what's wrong with that person? Bright copper kettles. Yeah. Anyways, to go from A to B to B to D, uh, I got to the point where I was like, well, we should make our own little favorite things lists and talk about them. And then I gamified it a little bit more, and I was like, okay, I want you guys to tell me for each of your senses the five taste, hearing, sight, smell, and f- touch, what is your favorite one of all of those of things? Of all of those things. All of the senses? Like, like, yeah, like what is your favorite, and this is why. Sight. Yeah, what's, I mean, your, yeah, what's your favorite smell? Let's start there. I love oh, touch. Oh. I, I, guys, I got to just say oh, this yeah. right off your top. That's <laughs> even name our favorite senses. I love touching my dick. <laughs> That's number one. Touching That's your favorite good. smell. <laughs> That's my favorite sm- touch. Yeah, okay. Is that as fun if you can't see anything? And if it well, like if what if you couldn't feel it? But well, you couldn't see it, but you, you can, wouldn't be able. You, you're not taking two. You're taking. You guys are taking the game well, a different guess, direction, but I think this is a good place to start. Uh, well, what is your favorite no, no, scent? No, because if you reduce it to one scent, you're not a full one scent. You're one not sense. an animal, right? Well, yeah. but if you had touch, you could at least like touch things. Yeah, but you couldn't communicate, I guess. Right, you'd be a blob. Yeah, you'd you're be just a. Blob. a, a <laughs> I'd still touch my dick though. Maybe, but you wouldn't feel. I it. trust that you'd find a way. Thanks, Elliot. <laughs> Life, <laughs> dick finds a Elliot's way. Elliot's really hopeful for me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I think you got a good future ahead. <laughs> Thanks, man. Um, but so, I'm sorry, Joe. We railroaded your your wholesome favorite your probably, Christmas no, memories. <laughs> favorite Christmas memories associated with the. Sen- no, not even Christmas memories. Nothing. No. Okay. Okay. Christmas let's start over. Life. Try to t- talk We're to us talk as about if our five, five years old. We're going to talk about our five sentences and your favorite. Um, thing associated with each of those oh, things. So okay. let's start with smell. What is What's your, your hands smell? down mm. favorite smell? Wow, what an insane question. Because I think I've answered is, this. Scent is most closely tied to memory. So you're basically asking. Oh, really? Is that the thing? Is that you did? Yeah, you scent, did more homework than is, I did. Well, scent is what I've heard is that scent is the. Uh, yeah, it's most, it'll bring you it, back. It, it it connects the most with that part of your it, brain. It like incites. It's a catalyst for nostalgia. Mm-hmm. I've said this before. That's but, a tough. But question. I feel like mine are my favorite smell is like, a, like a for like pine campfire kind of like a man. That is a lot of different smells. Campfire might be maybe like up firewood, there for me. like at the smell of bur- firewood campfire yeah. burning. No, arson? not burning. Yeah, arson. <laughs> arson, yeah. Yeah, yeah arson. I love the smell of arson. Arson's my favorite scent. Um, campfire. Outdoorsy. Yeah, campfire. Outdoor, like nature. Because it, now, if you were going down Elliot's uh, thought path, I would. that's because it reminds you of camping and being outdoors and those times that you were doing that as a kid. Tell us about that. Yeah. Yeah, I did go camping a lot with my family as well, a kid. Well, let's talk about it. Yeah. About it. Well, it was wonderful. What's right? your favorite memory? Of that time, you know, I'll t- I've said it a lot, but I'll say it again. Same. It's uh, my brother and I, either in Yosemite or Lake Tahoe, probably Tahoe. They get confused all the time. Those two places. Uh, well, they're national parks and they're gorgeous. They do look very similar because they're all redwoods and shit. <laughs> but one me. of my favorite memories is uh, my brother and I running through the trees at a high rate, and because there's just like trees everywhere. Like the Star Wars speeder. Like the speeder bikes. Yeah, Yeah, yeah. Return of the Jedi. We were the Return of the Jedi speeder bikes, and we were running through the trees together. And then you you guys would run straight into one and then explode. Yeah. yeah. (laughs) Well, clearly you ran into a fire. Yes, I ran into a fire, and the whole (laughs) place burned down, and that smell uh, stuck with me. That scene for me as a kid. Maybe the smell of pine or something. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, that scene for me as a kid was like, I wasn't a huge Star Wars like buff, but that the speeder bikes I thought were the coolest so cool. freaking thing. And when he like falls off of it and hits the tree, yeah. it's just like dunk. Yeah. <laughs> and when they're like next to each other yeah. and they're like there's a tree coming between them and they're like stuck. That's some fucking crazy it's shit. It's really cool. Yeah. It's cool. So trees and sl- camping. Yeah, like, like nature, nature, I guess. Yeah. Nature, pine. I get that. Ellen, do you know what yours is? That's a, that yeah, basically that. I Same think one. campfires and like Pine. I think that there's a smell associated with holiday gatherings where when you walk into the kitchen, the kitchen gets a little warmer than the rest of the yeah. house and you can smell all the crap and whatever that smell is, surrounded by a bunch of people who know what they're doing way more than you know what yeah, you're doing. they're about to make delicious Beautiful. shit. Mm-hmm. And you're just trying to grab a beer out of the fridge. Or you got that Ooh. warm cocoa or it's that the smell of yeah. anticipation coffee. of morning like, coffee. Yeah, and you're just in the morning kitchen. Coffee. And- morning coffee is uh, definitely up there too. For your smell? Yeah, yeah. I guess like smelling good coffee first thing in the morning might be one of the 
best. Things. I think a lot of this is going to remind us of March Gladness, like some of the stuff that we end up talking about, mm-hmm. which is another thing I think I want to bring back real soon. And well, I have great news about the calendar, Joe. Well, I guess right we up. could do it for March. Might as well wait. Um, but yeah, I want to do. Maybe we uh, get it out now. Maybe we do it now. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like um, there's a few ways we could do it. I want because to maybe... of my future prediction. Yeah. yeah. I Steve's, don't, Steve's don't future. shoot the messenger. I'm just telling you what the news <laughs> oh, is. Got it. Steve's time travel was just a month down the road. Yeah. yeah. Well, I won't say. I don't want to hurt. I want you guys to have a good Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> One good Christmas. Um, One more good Christmas. <laughs> I was thinking about mine, and I think mine is, it's the. Uh, it's kind of like what you're talking about. It's not just one singular smell. It's, a, it's more of an environmental s- smell of um, a baseball field. Like, oh, like yeah. not like league not like mode. a yeah, not like a major league field, but like when you would go and it could be a football field or a high school like sporting events type thing with the concession stand just pumping out that oh, grease yeah, that, that smell of kissing a girl with bad breath under the bleachers. <laughs> Gross. <laughs> uh, but like the the sizzle from the grill of bad like Costco hamburgers <laughs> that come in the like yeah, the pre made thing yeah. and they're just sizzling. The popcorn. It mixes with the popcorn. It mixes with the fresh cut grass and the dirt. Beautiful. Beautiful. Such like when I, and you're talking about nostalgia, it brings me back. So I think that's true. But that smell is very specific, and I feel like every non-professional sporting place smells like that. What yeah. about those those leather gloves, Joe? Those leather gloves? The ones that you wear in baseball? Oh yeah, the smell of the leather. Yeah, is that part of it? Maybe I don't know. Maybe it probably it probably gets in there. You ever smell the ball? You ever catch it after being being thrown? You just what if you it? were the one kid that every time you caught it, you just smell it yeah, before you, ever... you threw it? <laughs> That's what you do. It's like Jake, you would have rolled a double play, but you smelled the ball again. I just gotta smell the ball, coach. <laughs> like you're you're like protecting one of the plates, <clears throat> and before the guy runs over to it, mm-hmm. you get the ball thrown at you, and you just smell it. Yeah, smell it. You should have tagged the runner, Jake. Oh, the smell of tennis balls is. That's a good one, so too. Good. When you open the can. I was, yeah. yeah, I was just going to. Well, have you guys ever cut open a, a tennis ball? I we'll would be right never. back. Would... <laughs> Dude, so much blood comes out. Yeah, it's, it's weird crazy. how much blood is Why is there so here, much blood? Right? That makes sense because since we're 45 minutes into this. <laughs> yeah. There's like yolk here. in it. I think we're five minutes in. <laughs> and we're back. Um,. Uh, let's go, dude. Can I? That reminded me of a kind of an interesting memory that's like really strange, but I I don't know if I've ever talked about this. But I won't go too much into a tangent. But no, tangents are totally fine. This can be the whole podcast. Well, you no, can keep I mean, it short too is fine. Yeah, okay, so it's not too much. <laughs> it's care. not too much of a tangent. But uh, do you guys have you guys ever played with or messed around with or seen? Mexican jumping beans? No, I um, always thought them saw them like uh, on cart like Looney Tunes and stuff. But you never saw them in real life. And I'm pretty sure every time they made a joke or referenced them, it was borderline racist. No, no, yes, <laughs> yes. like they gave but them I voices. Think I have. I think as a kid, I've played with them where they they literally like they're like slinkies. No, those are slinkies. Did they, you like, play with a slinky? You held them and they like rolled around and weird. Uh, is that not? There's no. They're like. Do you know what I'm talking about? You ever seen these things? Steve just pointed to Ryan off camera. They're like in these plastic containers he and they to click. Two Mexican they're like jumping beans. they're like these little like acorn looking things. Okay. And they're in these plastic containers, and when you walk past them, I mean, they don't make them anymore, I guess. But when I was a kid, I saw them everywhere, like little novelty toy shops and stuff. And they'd have these little square plastic containers clear, and inside there were these two beans Mm -hmm. that would look more like little nuts, maybe. And they're just like clicking in there. Like bouncing around almost, like clicking. Like, like they were just, actually you jumping? You hear the clicking, and it was just the nuts were like hitting the little plastic in there. And I remember buying one and being like, this is fucking cool, Mexican jumping beans. And I took it out of the container, and I put them on the table, and truly, they like bounce around. They're like little things that Do are they like, only bounce around when they're next to each other? Is no, it, you could separate it and it starts bouncing around. And then I was like, I loved it. I was like, this is cool. Whatever the fuck this is, this is great. And then I was like, one day. You opened it up. I got to open it up. Oh, no. What'd you find? Don't you have to open it? Well, like, would wouldn't have you to. have opened I it? I used to have a, uh, you remember Stretch Armstrong? Yeah. He had a villain named That one really Vax is. Man. Stop, evildoers. Stretch Armstrong, I will destroy you. Introducing Batman, Stretch Armstrong's arch enemy. 
use the super-sucking back bump to turn him into a mutating monster, then stretch him to villainous proportions. Yeah. yeah. Va do you remember Vac-Man? Oh, Man, I had Vac-Man. Yeah. You, you sucked, sucked the him air out, out of him. Yeah. It was styrofoamy, and you could form him in different formations. Yeah. I cut both of them open to see of what was inside. Of course you did. And then you were sad. <laughs> yes, I was. I was truly incredibly sad. Yeah. But you had to know how it worked. Stretch right? was, yeah, yeah. Stretch was just like goo. And I needed to do it. So that's what my thing was. Yes, yeah, I needed uh, to blue, know blue. how it worked. What was in it? So here, let me show you guys. This is what it look. What they look like. This is what Mexican jumping beans look like. Okay. Wow. They yeah. look like little acorns so almost. I've never seen that in my I'm life. I'm so confused. Isn't it crazy? And yeah. they jump around. They literally just fucking jump around. So one day, I'm like, I need to see what the fuck is in here. Because this is crazy. This doesn't feel mechanical. This stuff shouldn't be jumping. And the batteries don't die. There's like no batteries in there or anything. Dude, it's just ghost power. I fucking open it, and inside is like a little like Man. maggot. Like a little like <laughs> tiny caterpillar. <laughs> like a tiny caterpillar maggot. <laughs> <laughs> really? Yeah. And it's alive. And it like started crawling away. And I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> and you were sad. <laughs> Wait, did you open the other one? Did you see if it was just an anomaly? Like, <laughs> no, maybe you yeah, just had yeah. One? I opened it, and it also had another little bug in it that crawled the fuck away. <laughs> you just watched it crawl away. It was like a little bug, like a little caterpillar. Have you made like? Do, was do it people jumping? know about this? So here, I found it on Wikipedia, and was I'll read jumping? to you guys what it says. No, it wasn't jumping. It just crawled away. Why is it jumping in the thing but not jumping on the thing? I think it's like trapped in there and it's like trying to get out. <laughs> I think that might be what's why it jumps. This is what Wikipedia says about it. Whoa. Mexican jumping beans, also known as frijoles saltarines. It's beautiful Spanish. Yeah, what is wrong with you? Thank you. <laughs> are seed so pods uh -huh. that have been inhabited by the larva of a small moth. No way. And are native to Mexico. No way. The bean is usually tan to brown in color. You showed us that. It jumps m when mildly heated. That I didn't know. They are from the shrub Sebastiana Pavananina, also often referred to as jumping bean. Wow. However, they are not related to actual beans, but rather to spurges. Elliot, you owe me five bucks. The beans are considered non-toxic, but are not generally eaten. After the moth laid egg on the plant hatches, the larva eats away the inside of the bean until it becomes hollow and attaches itself to the inside of the bean with silk-like thread. The larva may live for months inside the bean with varying periods of dormancy. If the larva has adequate conditions of moisture and temperature, it will live long enough to go into a pupal stage. Mm, metamorphosis. In, in the spring, the moth forces itself out of the bean through a round trap door, leaving behind the pupil casing. After its metamorphosis, the small silver and gray colored moth lives for no more than a few days. Oh, <laughs> I'm free. Fuck. But that, that feels like a lifetime to something that lives three days, I feel like. Maybe. Uh, did, did you ever hear that? That it, if it like lives for a day, it's like the longest day ever because it, that's the only thing it's ever known. The lifetime is its lifetime. The way they yeah. worded that though did not sound like So anyway, it says when the bean is warmed by being held in the palm of a hand, for example, the larva will move to eat, pulling on the threads and causing the characteristic hop. That's insane. Leaving the beans <laughs> in a heated environment such as direct sunlight for an extended period of hours can easily kill them. Oh man, Joe, I'm very happy that you said that because <laughs> I, in my mind I was like, this feels insane, but you guys are being cool about so it. So much I'm power cool. coming from it tugging on a little string to making that thing, which is so much mm -hmm. bigger than it and has so much more mass, well, and they freaking jump. And they sold these things? They sold them <laughs> as Mexican jumping beans. They Dad, probably you heard still of this do. Before, right? Yeah, okay, makes you cool. wonder how many other Brian toys he, and he things that, that we loved were, growing up Brian have he, bugs in them. Brian said he knew that there were Mexican jumping beans, but he didn't know that they were maggots. Yeah, that's basically <laughs> that sums it up. Uh, Is it animal cruelty? 
Well, now you're getting no, into no, kind of a it, tangent. No, because that was what feels kind of tangent. That's true. It's what no, they it's naturally do. It's what they naturally do. But like, you we're just taking have, advantage of it. But selling you sh- it, is but you weird. shouldn't. Yeah, selling it and then having what, it because they don't get any of the profit. I'm just saying. Would you put that on Shark Tank? <laughs> would you walk on Shark Tank with well, that not idea? Only, yeah. Not only is the selling that's good it, TV. Uh, I find these bugs and I uh, jostle them around Check in their it, home. Mark Cuban. Not only is the selling it part kind of weird, but also the fact that they're making it like a toy. Is kind of weird, and then also the fact that like it probably will never f- live through the conditions in which it is needs to why? emerge and become a mob. Is there anything in the Wikipedia page about it becoming controversial? No, not at all. Do you think ant farms are bullshit? Let me put in controversy <laughs> in here and see if we can find something. Mexican dirt. jumping bean controversy. <laughs> That's the title of the podcast. <laughs> this is from 1994, and the article is called "Jumping Bean Bounces Back." Come on, you remember the fun of holding one in your hand. Now the little curiosities are hot once again. And they're jumping because they're hot. We learned I that. mean, listen, I honestly I would I would definitely mess with it. I would play with it. Yeah. For a I day. would hold for it like, in my yeah. hand. Like that's cool, and then you would never use it again. And then that bug would just eat its in its the its house. Okay. You killed not, it. It's not you, really you released the them. worst thing. The I did worst thing that you're them, doing is making re- it eat. Yeah. It's just doing its thing. I think it's eating the contents of the thing, but once it's done, it's done. I mean, once we're all done, we're all done. Yeah, man. Mm. Mm. We'll be right right back. back. Uh, uh, Hey, guys. Welcome to the ad portion of the podcast. What a time to be alive, huh? We're taking ads out on the street today, and we'll see if maybe we bump into someone, and maybe we'll get a little opinion on some of these Great products we're about to advertise. Let's talk about Postmates. Speaking of delivering things right to your door or in your hands or whatever, Postmates is uh, wonderful. I'm sure you've used it. I've used it. Elliot, 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 Joe, everyone's used it, I feel like. Haven't you used it? I'm pretty sure you used it. Guys, when you need red wine at 4 p.m., sushi at 9 p.m., a breakfast burrito at 8 a.m., and ibuprofen at 10 a.m. Postmate it. Postmates is your personal food, delivery, grocery, delivery, whatever kind of delivery service you want all year round. Anything you're craving, Postmates can deliver it. Let's think about it. Pizza? Yeah. Sandwiches? Absolutely. Bagels and cream? Yeah, dude. Keep it, can try again. How about uh, peanuts? Yeah. If there's a place near you that sells peanuts, Postmates can bring you peanuts. <laughs> you know, Postmates, uh, they, they deliver. That's just what they do. They're the largest on-demand network in the U.S. and offer delivery from all restaurants, uh, grocery and convenience stores, and traditional retailers you could possibly want or need. Every single dang one of them. Anyone that you can think of. And uh, 24 hours a day, guys, 365 days a year, Postmates will bring you what you need within the hour. That's right, within the hour. Don't believe it? Give it a shot. No more trips to the store, guys. Don't even worry. Don't even think about it. You don't even have to know where the store is. Postmates will deliver anything to you. You just download the iOS or Android for free. Oh, I got stuck. We got a crunch. I got cable crunched over here by Kevin. This is a classic move from the, it's an industry term. Guys, you can download the app or, uh, for iOS or Android for absolutely free. Absolutely free. You just browse local restaurants and businesses and track your delivery in real time. So guys, for limited time, Postmates is giving our listeners one hundred dollars of free delivery credit for your first seven days. And to start your free delivery is download the app and use the code VALLEYCAST. That's right, code VALLEYCAST. And you get $100 of free delivery credit for your first seven days when you download the Postmates app. Hey, guys. Anything you need. Anytime you need it. Postmate it. Download Postmates and save with code Valleycast. <laughs> hey guys, I'm here on the street talking about Muggsy jeans. Are, are, they, are they the most comfortable 
jeans ever made? Absolutely. There's no exaggerations about it. Muggsies are real jeans that literally feel as comfortable as sweatpants. They're as comfortable as sweatpants. The magic is in Muggsies' proprietary fabrics. I'll tell you about it. Follow me. Which include a blend of high-tech materials that make these jeans mind-blowingly soft and flexible. And best of all, Muggsies come in a they come in a stylish fit that's not too baggy, guys, and it's not too tight. Also, you 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 can even you can look better than you feel. Can you even imagine it? Come on, if you want comfortable jeans that look good, Muggsy jeans are for you. Bottom line. The guys at Muggsy are so confident that you'll love them that they offer uh, free USA shipping. How you doing? <laughs> free shipping, guys, in the USA. All right? That's how confident that you'll they'll love you will love it. And your comfort is 100% guaranteed, guys. Do your legs a favor. Grab your own pair of the jeans that are sweeping the nation by heading to mudzy.com. That's right, Muggsy.com. That's M-U-G-S-Y dot com. And use the code VALLEYCAST for $10 off. Again, that's Muggsy.com. Use the code VALLEYCAST for $10 off. Guys, I want to talk about Box of Awesome. <sighs> They're the best product I've ever used in my dang life. And this fall, you can start a new monthly routine that'll upgrade your life and style with uh, Box of Awesome. Yeah, man, from Bespoke Post. <sighs> Bespoke Post sends guys only the best stuff every month. So whether you're looking to craft your own hard cider or toast perfectly aged cocktails, Box of Awesome. <sighs> Hiya! Hiya! A karate kick! Box of Awesome has you covered, guys. From style and grooming goods to barware, cooking tools, and outdoor gear, Box of Awesome has carefully built collections <sighs> for every part of your life. To get started, why don't you take the quiz at boxofawesome.com? Your answers will help them pick the right Box of Awesome for you. They release new boxes every month across a ton of different categories, and it's free to sign up, and you can skip a month or cancel any time. Each box costs only 45 bucks and has over $70 worth of gear inside. Mamma mia. So guys, get 20% off your first monthly box when you sign up at Box of Awesome. Oh. .com. Your answers will help uh, them pick the right box of awesome for you. Once you take that quiz, they'll know exactly what to get you, damn it. Hi. So guys, do that quiz. Go to boxofawesome.com. Pick the right box of awesome for you. They release new boxes every month across a ton of different categories. It's free to sign up. And you can skip a month or cancel any time. Each box costs only 45 bucks, like I said, and has over $70 worth of stuff. So get 20% off your monthly box when you sign up at Box of Awesome. Hoya! Dot com. Enter code Valleycast at checkout. That's Box of Awesome. Kickins! Kickins! Dot com. Code Valleycast for 20% off your first box. Thank you, Box of Awesome. And thank you guys for listening to the ads. Now it's back to the podcast. (laughs) (laughs) 
the uh, concept. Someone met, uh, on Reddit, someone was talking about it, and it says, I knew this. I knew that there were larvae inside and bought some to take care of. Only one moth survived, but it was so cute when it came out. Well, that's nice. Yeah. You had that moth for three days. Very strange. Just, it just reminds me of, like, you know, you see, like, lighters and stuff at the front of the convenience store. I imagine seeing like a bunch of these. Yeah, things. it would be like a like a little flat of them, and there'd be a bunch of them all like in a in a bigger square, and all the little squares and were the no beans. No one ever and knew. And you hear them all clicking. And in you there. don't even have to look at your data, like your sales data. You know if you're not doing well when you come in, and the warehouse is just filled with moths. Just like, yeah. Shit, yeah. we didn't meet our quota. Moths yeah. fucking everywhere. This person also That's said, true, I think, for any business. Moths If you walk in there everywhere. and there's moths everywhere, <laughs> you're not doing well. This also said that, like, this person didn't realize it was, they would only jump when they were heated. And he said, I had them when I was a kid, and they would jump on the coffee table and stuff. So well, maybe it was just a warm room. It might heat them up to be jostled even a little bit. Mm. 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 Anyway, mm. Yeah. yeah, weird, right? That's crazy. Well, yeah. I don't. I Should think... we move on to taste or? <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, let's. Yeah. What's your favorite? Yeah, taste. This is good. It's gonna. Let's just do this and go on to tangents every freaking time. It's great. Great taste. Favorite, taste. Your favorite freaking taste. <sighs> this one's gonna be tough. This is very tough for me. I couldn't figure it out. No, it depends on my mood. I, I like mean, savory. I want to get it. I'll get it down to that. I, I like a savory, savory I'm taste more, savory, yeah. more than a sweet taste. Yeah, I, I, I was going back and forth on a bunch. I think I'm on the same boat as you. And I think that's as close as I can get it to something. I can give the pretty basic Joe answer, and I was trying to think of something better. But beer? The, no. The first bite of a perfectly cooked steak. I was going to say maybe a steak or like a really rare, like a perfect. Yeah. But that's also and depending I wanted to... on the, it depends. Like I don't, right now it's like I could go for like barbecue that's like garlic bread dipped in mashed potatoes, dipped in baked beans, dipped in pulled pork. And that's uh, just, yeah. that's just like a, mm -hmm. oh, that's nice, right? When you dip the barbecue sandwich in the baked beans. Right in there. No one's telling you not to. No one's telling you not to. There's no rules. It's all going mm. in the same tube, No one's ever Dad. done it. No one's thought of that. Yeah. 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 smart. Yeah. That's the coffee is a, I thought maybe, but what no. What about butter? That's not the taste. Butter is a taste to me that's like- If you're going to reduce like no it, other. it'd be butter. That's yeah. what I'm trying to You'd do because I couldn't- reduce it down to butter? I think so because butter's in so many things, right? And it, I guess if you want to get deeper than butter, you could be like salt. Straight from the I teat. think mostly butter though. Savory. Butter Even is- unsalted butter yeah. is still real Butter's nice. just fucking, you can put butter on anything. Yep. Put butter on a Ritz cracker. It fixes leftovers like nobody's business. But it sucks by itself. Like, you, like yeah, you can't eat a spoon of it. No, man, not but even. The, but ugh. the taste, the taste is associated with so many things. So good cookies, apple good pie. croissants, apple pie. You guys get that salted butter? Oh, yeah. yeah. What about what about butter? honey butter? Honey butter. Holy <laughs> shit. That's nice. It's a different day though. That's oh a yeah. Day. Man. That's like a that's a special different kind occasion. of thing. We had a we had a place called the Night Owl, and uh, it was kind of like the the diner of our small You're town about the Berettas, the legendary yes, our own. From yeah, the, the night the owl legacy. that we owned, but the, the diner in our small town was the night owl and it had a, um, a second restaurant attached to it in the back that was only open up an evenings called the back room. And it was a barbecue place, chicken and stuff like that. But they sold this bread that came with honey butter. And this is the only place oh. you could get it. And it was fucking amazing. And I've never had anything. So that just reminds me of mm. Anderson's pea soup. You, you've heard of Anderson's? It's like in Buellton. It's like if you ever go to Santa Barbara, if you ever do the drive to Santa Barbara up the coast, uh -huh. you'll you'll see these big billboards for Anderson's pea soup. It's like these two cartoon chefs, and they're making like a big pot of pea soup. You know, you don't know what I'm talking no, about? No, not at all. Well, anyway, we used to go because my mom loved fucking Solvang, and so we'd go to Solvang as a family sometimes, and it was fun. Everybody whatever. loves Solvang Drag for a oh, day. I mean, I, as a don't kid, go after Solvang. As a kid, you don't really love Solvang because you're like, what am I going to do here? Play with a fucking wooden shoe? Some Mexican jungle beans when, or something? When you get older, you're like, oh, the Danishes are so good. It's beautiful here. It's like For a day. Yeah, for a day. My mom would like to go and we'd stay in like a shit hotel and then we'd come back the yeah. next day. I'm going to come up with a YouTube challenge called Actually Have Fun in Solvang for two days in a row. <laughs> You're probably saying it right when you say Solvang. Wow, guys. Yeah. Solvang. After Solvang. Evil ski -burs. Love it. And I'm saying it's great. It's just Solvang's, Solvang is the epitome of like a, a facade. Because you go down that main street and it's beautiful and it's got all this Danish architecture and, and culture. But yes. you go one block behind it like if you want to, oh shoot, I need to turn around and go the other direction. You go 
one block off of that main street, and then it's just these like tiny worn down houses. Wow, and guys, like, oh, I'm okay. sorry, your tiny free theme park isn't up to your standards. <laughs> it's not a theme park. I don't park like, by I don't like this character. Yeah, I'm I don't upset. Like this character. There's no theme park there. I have a lot of feelings. <laughs> That's about the problem. Salt That's bank. why you can't have. I. It, Good but food, you know, though. even Alana, who like loves everything and is just happy to be alive in any sense of the word. I was like, we should go to Solvang. Let's just take like a Saturday and just drive to Solvang. And she's like, eh. I've never, honestly, <laughs> I've never heard of it. I've never oh, heard really? that Oh, you would love it. It's oh, great for you, a day. You should take yeah. Grace. Yeah. yeah. yeah she's I think fine. you guys would have a wonderful she's fine. time. She's fine where she is. Uh, go no, for you, one oh, day. Oh, I see. Okay. You don't, it's just. We don't travel. Okay, got it. You should go by yourself. Have but a anyway, yeah, the I'm reason why, <laughs> the reason why I brought it up is because on the way to Solvang, we'd stop at this place called Pea Soup Anderson's or Anderson's Pea Soup uh -huh. or whatever. And it's just this like cute little fucking like pea soup restaurant where their specialty is pea soup. Is pea they, soup good? It's good. They bring out this pea Ryan's soup. Chill. Fat no over Isn't there. It well, chill? well, no, it's hot. So here's here's why this pea soup is good. Maybe maybe pea soup on its own, it's not very good because it's a burger. But here, pea soup is food. just it's just <laughs> peas all blended together yeah, with cream horrible. and like salt. Yeah, and then they and then they the give middle? you like a fucking like plate full of these like little containers and one is full of bacon and another one's full of oh, cheese so you can just throw and another little... one's full of sour right. cream and another one's full of like onion crisps it's like things. DIY pea soup and you just fucking dump all that shit in your pea soup and you mix it all up and you've got this like savory delicious and you can get it in like a bread bowl that's, that's... all like oven cooked and you dip the bread in it and... bread bowls be underrated yo oh yeah I agree so anyway that place had great pea yeah, soup yeah you're right but what I but people, what you reminded me of people are sleeping of, on bread bowls. Mm -hmm. People are totally sleeping on bread bowls. They'll kill you. That's Don't sleep why. sleep on them. You gotta eat them. But Joe, well, your thing about the sweet butter reminded me of P. Soup Anderson's in the waiting room would have this delicious cheese spread that you could sample, mm. and they sold it there. And it was this aged cheddar with like some kind of like wine mix into it or something. Yeah. But it was this just this delicious creamy sharp cheddar, and then next to it they had this bread that they fresh baked there at P. Soup Anderson's. And you could like take all samples of like you just smear cheese on these little bread slices. They're just giving you free stuff. Yeah, and you get to eat it before the yeah. soup. Yeah, and oh. then you have, and then you could take a big bag of the bread and a big sealed up container of the cheese Damn home girl. if you want. That's and good. of course we would, and it would last like four days when we got home. Well, that's this. But I feel like we got to go on an excursion. But that taste, that cheese, that bread, that pea soup Andersons, that's that's a taste to Is me. Is it pea soup Andersons or Andersons pea soup? I don't know. We called it pea soup Andersons, but it looks like it's just Andersons pea soup restaurant. I, like I don't know. Pea soup Andersons is better. I'm sorry too. I wish I knew how to how to fix this. Little but that's foods, my that's my taste, I guess. Little foods that are like uh very specific to to regions are also fascinating. I, that's why I want to bring you guys to Montana and just get you down on the Huckleberry train. Huckleberry up there is in everything. Jams, milkshakes, it's so good. Spreads, like you're talking I'm about. In. Huckleberry pie. So I've never had good. Huckleberry pie. I would like to have some, please. Yeah. Yeah. Have, you, have you Huckleberried? No, I don't think I have. Ryan, you ever Sounds Huckleberry? Really nice. Oh, it's so good. It's um, like a better blueberry. Really quick, I it is definitively pea soup Anderson's. I like that. Yeah. That's what makes it special. Yeah. I think so. So you don't have to keep writing your letter yeah we we, we yeah. get it yeah <laughs> and we're sorry about look i'm saying soul thing's great for a day okay so we covered our tastes um, what's next what's your favorite feel what's your favorite thing to feel man i like a back scratch like a motherfucker a back scratch i'm very head similar scratch, head, scratch, head scratch is my head number scratch, one back scratch 100 percent. cat scratch people could be like i'm down with sex i love sex it feels so good i'm like yeah it's good it's great i'll do it for a while I could head scratch for 24 hours if somebody was willing to do it and and be fine with it. I don't want to have sex for 24 Jeez, hours. Dude. Can you pay someone to scratch your head? I bet you can. What if you went to a masseuse and you're like, just scratch my head? Well, you guys, do you ever get um, ha fancy haircuts? It's a nice time. I've do told they, you about they, my I know, they do the massage. They shampoo and they condition. Not now! Stop! Not Stop now! That! God, all right, Ryan, what do you want to say? What is it? What's your what favorite? What is it, Ryan? What is it? <laughs> <laughs> but what is your favorite feel? <laughs> Which is... Feel? What? Peanut your butter? Your... Feel. Yeah, it's so good. Mm, I'm melting right now. <laughs> <laughs> Ryan's peanut somewhere butter. else today. <laughs> <laughs> peanut butter. God I love peanut it. butter feels. <laughs> I love the way peanut butter feels on my bare ass. <laughs> 
clean shaved. Oh, man. <laughs> That's so good. Yeah, head scratches are really it's good. It's number one, man. I mean, Cummins real good, too, man. Uh, that would I uh, I kind of assume that one goes without like as the, I mean as the I know as I mean the, that's the standard because that's a feel it. right yeah. would you categorize that as categorize that as a feel yeah for sure yeah yeah it's just too intense I mean it's like it's like it's great it's not a sight it's, it's not your favorite thing to see so if you had to choose <laughs> yeah. between okay. I don't I don't know that I'm doing it if I see it okay happen. how about this because and I'm gonna uh, my choice I'll tell you my choice has already been made. But I want to know your guys' choice. If you had to Solving. choose between, we're going, we're going to go blue. Oh, here. we're so going blue here. Uh oh. If All you right. had to choose Ladies between, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to go blue. Okay, I'll go med. I'll use medical terms Thank for you. you. Fucking. Thank you. You got Christmas Snowflakes. carols in the background. Hey, yeah, man. This is the future liberals Monster. want. If you had a choice between never having an orgasm ever again, an orgasm. Or never having the feeling of having a nice head scratch ever again. What would you choose? I would go for the. I would keep the orgasm. Absolutely. <laughs> so that's, that's why not I, a difficult. That's question. why I think it wins over feel. That's what I'm saying. It's the common denominator. I think it's feel. I think feel. So is there's just, no reason to yeah. harp. Yeah, because everyone. I would say it pretty much. I think everyone. everyone. Yeah. I don't know, guys. I might be on the other side of really it. head yeah. scratches more. Yeah, because there's so much about the. Uh, I'll use medical terms. Sure. Uh, the the process of fucking. <laughs> where's the <laughs> where's the fucking? Um, that's enjoyable. That, um, yeah, I, I the head scratch is so nice and okay. so long, and it's another way of um, being close with somebody and can well, just get me through a bad day. You're uh, uh, Joe. Yeah. You're, what you're talking about is the feeling truly of nur of being nurtured. Mm. Is that really what it is, is or is it just that? My, a, or is it just it opinion. just feels real I mean, freaking I good? It, I, I think that you enjoy. it. I think there's a feeling to both being nurtured and there's a feeling of being totally free, and both of those things are not uh, necessarily the same thing. I think maybe, but I also it's just an area of your no, head of your body no that's maybe. never. This is stimulated. The, what I said is the only way to think about it. Oh, okay. Well, thank you for watching the Valley Cast. Bye. <laughs> um, all right. What's the next feel or next uh, emotion? Or what, what, what do we got left? Uh, hearing? hearing. What's your favorite sound? Waves. I'm a big. I'm a big. Cliche. Is it really? I'm a you're walking a big old, cliche. You're a big old motivational I poster on a wall. Waves. Mine's gonna be pretty cheesy too. Mine's night. Che night. Uh, chirping of uh, crickets and all that. Grasshoppers. Whatever. Outside. Love that crackling of a fire. I'm real. Whatever. Fire I'm just a, a rotating one. sound effect machine. Like relax. I'm a. Man, I'm an waves ambient noise is so maker. So good. Waves yeah. is good. Waves. Waves is the best. Yeah. The, 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 rain. The small, rain, on the rain. Rain, rain on nice the roof. Rain. Rain on the roof is too. my favorite. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, I love music. Though. Yeah. Music. I was kind of on the fence around all that too. Like, you talking panic or rage or what? No, I think I'm more like a anxiety. Uh, yeah, anxiety. <laughs> soft piano is yeah, like one of my favorite things. Was I say, oh, soft piano accompanied by like a sultry female voice singing with it? You're like, oh, you want to make me fall in love? I'll it's fall more in nurturing. love. It's more nurturing. Yeah. That's more nurturing. Yeah, I mean, I guess, uh, you know, waves is good. Music is good. Laughter. Laughter is yeah. a good sound. This was me going back to my March Mad or Gladness thing that we did. I know. Nothing can take me out of a bad mood quicker than a baby laughing like it fills me with so much joy the sound of it the 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 nurture it's part so of organic it. it's, it's not it's not a forced thing right doing. and it's a weird like reminder that you know it's like laughter is this real thing within us that's uncontrollable which means humor is real which means like also the desire to make them laugh becomes immediate yeah and universal it becomes a party you don't you're, you're like yeah. your goal is to do nothing other than like make babies smile mm -hmm. I could be in the worst mood, and if a little baby just starts laughing uncontrollably, I will, I can't help but laugh. And yeah. Smile yeah. Them. And it just, it, yeah. It's Was there like one particular thing that could get your babies to laugh like consistently, or do you think that their senses of humor change so much that some kind of peekaboo wouldn't get the kind of giggles it, does, it did last week? Yeah, it changes for sure. But like there's always the, you know, I think Jackson laughed a lot when we would do the, you know, raspberry on his, uh, on his tummy, and he would just. They would laugh to the point of crying. Yeah, like and that's like that's ah, some wholesome so shit. Good, just man. like his father. Yeah, and just like we did. Yeah. I cry I, until I, I laugh. I raspberry <laughs> Joe, and he cry until I laugh. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah. Imagine if it was just the the emotional process was flipped and that's how it worked for everybody. <laughs> like you couldn't stop crying until, until the laugh, laugh kicked in. <laughs> I'd like that. And then you'd piss yourself. That'd be an easy w- way to have a fun time. <laughs> <laughs> Any other senses? Uh, what's the last one? Sight. You did, it's your oh. favorite vision. Your favorite thing to see. Yeah, I was trying to go. I'm just a beautiful woman. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, <laughs> come on, right? <laughs> I tried to get his like basic beautiful eyes in things that like mem- mesmerize me, and I th- think my answer <laughs> in a non-arsonist way is f- fire, like watching a flame oh. in a campfire. Yeah. I can sit there and watch coals burn and just like just stare I go to at a it. different place. Yeah. It's weird. There's some kind of like human I evolutionary thing. I think everyone does have there. a slight hypnotism with fire. It's such an inter- I don't know why that is. Do you feel the same way? Uh-huh. You, you can just stare at a fire? It's like a thing that you, you meditate on a lot. Yeah. yeah. Like the, when you're learning meditation. I wonder if there's something, some stare. science behind that. Let me see here. Christmas lights are in my top ten. That's a good yeah. one. Yeah. Stars. The Stars ocean. Stars are in there. Ocean frightens me. Really? Yeah, it's pretty, but just like, looking at well, ocean it should frighten you. It's terrifying. Yeah. It's like, oh, that thing can kill me. I like love that. it. It's beautiful. I love looking at it, but it, uh, it is, it is tr- tr- truly scary. <laughs> yeah, angry ocean, big waves. I'm just like, that's the, that's the most frightening thing that I've ever seen. No, thank you. My brother has a the. He's still recovering from getting, um, like vestibular neurosis or neurisis or something like that. That's, that's what. Like that's a, when the ocean beats the shit out of you. He was surfing and got some kind of weird <laughs> bug that crawled into it's his ear. It's when you're born with an ocean problem. Yeah, and he's Wait, he will now. So your brother's like a Mexican jumping bean. He's a lot like <laughs> he's got a mag. Yeah, he's a lot like a Mexican <laughs> jumping bean. Actually, I'm gonna tell him that. Uh, David, you're a lot like a Mexican jumping bean <laughs> right now, and he's recovering slowly. Uh, but he can't. He hasn't been able to stand up and get up and it's all a microscopic That's, bug that crawled into his head from the ocean like it's still there <laughs> is it still there how do you kill the bug what does he got to do i don't know if it just dies he's apparently can he's getting better but it I only lives I for know. three days well it has to <laughs> yeah i don't know what happened <laughs> yeah he's gone uh we've talked he's fine uh but yeah no he's waits for a little moth to fly out of his ear and then yeah, that's it then no, that's he, that. i don't know in the perfect voice and then dies. he gets to make a wish and then he makes a wish yeah, yeah. guys this thing uh, someone asked on quora why do humans like staring at fires? And this answer says... This is like the biggest buzzkill of my life. Fire is primal. That's the answer? <laughs> Fire has been a vital element of mankind's survival for a very long time. Mm. It is a dangerous thing, which man has tamed <laughs> over the course of 100,000 generations into a source of life-giving warmth and security. This is my high school drama teacher. Man's cautious embrace of fire has evolved with us and is encoded into our DNA as powerfully as is the fearful reaction of a newborn horse to a snake. Oh, man. Is that really what you're reading? Anyone wishing to learn more about human (laughs) instincts and the strength of the ancestral memories of a species would be well served to start with Dianetics. (laughs) It is no wonder then how we can relate to fire as a living and breathing thing. Is and this a real thing? No, I added the dynamics <laughs> part. There's a, I guess there is something called the two million year old self. This person is suggesting it is no wonder then how we can relate to fire as a living and breathing thing at a most basic level. It is a friend and a companion which can grow exponentially in minutes and betray us if we aren't careful to turn our backs on it would be very unwise. <laughs> <laughs> lastly, all I, I, you can't keep going. <laughs> it's the end here. <laughs> lastly, all creatures are wary and fascinated by movement. Motion draws our attention. As intelligent and social creatures, we look for faces and objects, see shapes and clouds. Our eyes constantly drown to shift and change. Gaze at a candle or sit by the campfire with family and friends. I dare you. The pleasure of staring into the flames, I watching what is effectively caveman. Pussy. Mm-hmm. Watching what Do is it. effectively caveman <laughs> TV can be just as compelling today as it was caveman a million TV. years ago. Oh my god. Caveman. Who penned TV. that? His name is Ben Vogel, captain on a first ring suburban fire department. Huh. Okay. <laughs> An arsonist. An arsonist. <laughs> <laughs> and known criminal. <laughs> I'm changing my answer Wanted from fire to, to into the spider verse. <laughs> I'm changing mine from fire to the internet. <laughs> Porn. My favorite thing to look at is the internet. Is that good? <laughs> uh, 
well, that was my dumb game. All okay. Right. Thanks, well, that everybody. was very nice, Joe. Hey, thank. I think we went to some fun places with that. Actually, I hope <laughs> we get really to good. see you guys listening to this on our tour. It'd be real fun to be heckled yeah. by you. And when you come to the show, <laughs> we will be playing this specific podcast, which is what yeah. Yeah, we're I'm actually going to reenact. I'm it. just going to print out. I'm going to be you. I'm just going to print no, out I'm gonna this be touch, thing. You're going to be smells. You're going to be hearing. Mm. I'm gonna print out this this whole thing about fire and just read it on stage. <laughs> we read it as with like a, a, with a nice poem, like George R. R. Martin. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> how long have we been recording for? This is a forty-six minute podcast. You got anybody else got some things to talk about? Some stuff? Oh, you'd like to keep going? You want to keep going? I don't know. I'm just seeing if there's anything else. I feel that good was about just it. one thing. I that was my thing. I, I wouldn't want to force satisfied. it. I felt really good about it. This whole thing. I wouldn't want to force it. They got more this podcast than they did last podcast. Look, we keep talking about that's that. That's what I. Care we about. felt bad about the this last podcast. And actually, going back to it, I don't think it was as bad as we thought. We were just really tired. We uh, were being ourselves, which was very tired. We were tired. Yeah, it was a rough day, I guess. Oh, by the way, I've beat some uh, some more V4s since that podcast. Just good man. Know. Just let yeah. you all know. It's very, it's a very fulfilling hobby. Yeah, that's. I'm happy you're doing it. Yeah, it's really nice. Um, all right, well, guys, thanks for listening. Um, I was gonna talk a little bit about the new Star Wars ride, but it's open in Florida. I don't want to hear anything about it, to be honest. Yeah. Yeah, I heard that you were very happy, and the reaction was great, and you're hoping that that reaction makes it open here quicker. Yes. Yeah. Oh, I, I can't really, wait. I really want it. Opens I here January seventeenth or something. Yeah, I'm gonna be going. That's when I'm. Gonna, yep. I, yeah, well, you should plan about, around yep, that for yep, sure yeah. because right. that's that's it, it's supposed to be the most incredible ride ever made. I heard I, it's you just go in and you sit down and you watch The Mandalorian. Yeah, and that's it. Yep. No, no, no. All it is is and baby. Great. An <laughs> animatronic of Baby, baby Yoda comes universal. out and it just like does this for two hours. Have so you bought a Baby yeah. Yoda yet? No, no. They don't sell Baby Yoda yet. Well, they couldn't. I because think it's, it's out and about now. They're, no, they're like taking pre-orders for things, but yeah. nothing's. You're gonna out get yet. a baby. Yoda. Did you guys see the Laura so. Dern thing? Nothing looks really that good. The Laura yet. Dern toy. The Laura Dern story. <laughs> <laughs> we'll end on this. This is my subject. So Laura Dern was on a red carpet, uh-huh. and the interviewer uh, asked, you know, the, the who was a very calm. It's like an E News type of thing. Mm-hmm. He goes, "What do you? What are your thoughts on Baby Yoda?" And Laura Dern says, oh, my God, I love Baby Yoda. I just saw him at a basketball game. (laughs) What? And (laughs) listen, and the interviewer says nothing, unsure, supposedly, if she's joking or not, and sort of looks at her like, and then she goes, and that's all I'm going to say about it. And then she says, it was an NBA game. (laughs) And so... The whole internet has been freaking Scouring out. Scouring for an NBA game where maybe Baby Yoda was? Uh, no, everyone is assuming that Laura Dern has absolutely no idea. What Baby Yoda is? Does she think Baby Yoda is a rapper? That's exactly, yes. No way. So here's, let me, can you turn the music down? Oh, yeah. Okay, here we go. Oh, no way. You have a clip? Exclusive. Have you seen Baby Yoda? Yes, I did. What do you think about Baby Yoda? Just today. I saw. I don't know if it's a him or a he or she. I don't, know. I don't know, but I think he was at a basketball game. <laughs> Silent. That's all I'm gonna say. <laughs> that I think I saw him at a ba- basketball game. Oh, she's he's losing her mind. What? She said he's in the NBA. <laughs> Bring that back. It was. <laughs> what did she say? <laughs> it was the NBA. It was the NBA. Yeah, yeah. Like, what is that supposed to mean? Oh, she's fake. I think I saw him at a basketball game. Okay. It was NBA. It was NBA. Wow. Uh, no, it's very funny. And she clearly it? has had no idea who Baby Yoda was, but she also had a sense of humor about it and followed up today with a picture of her at another basketball game that <laughs> says, like, keeping an eye out for Baby <laughs> <laughs> But she, she what did, did she, the best recovery yeah. that we should learn from. But did she admit that she didn't know what Baby Yoda was? No. No. No one cared. Everyone loves Laura Dern. They're not trying yeah. to come after she her. She just got caught in that she whole like. Yeah, no <laughs> she was doing that thing where it's like, I think I'm just supposed to say I know this person yeah. so I don't offend him. I think for sure she thought Baby Yoda, Lil something. Yeah. Rapper. <laughs> <laughs> that she probably saw at. An NBA game. Oh, no. Theory number one: Dern has never actually <laughs> seen The Mandalorian and just confused Baby Yoda for her Little Women co-star Timothy Chalamet. 
No. I mean, the mix-up is understandable since both Baby Yoda and Chalamet <laughs> are basketball fans <laughs> and have been referred to as a beautiful boy. Okay, this sounds like the a final joke verdict. Or... Sounds like we're <laughs> making funnies here. Dern is the Mandalorian. Think about it. <laughs> yes, allegedly Pedro Pascal is under the mask, but we but have, how do we know? We have uh... no proof of that other than hearing his voice. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, it's good stuff. Wow. Everyone's having a lot I of fun. I love it. All right, well, thanks a lot, guys. The only Baby Yoda thing I would get is um, a floating desk thing. Oh, that's a good idea. With it's like a little, little magnetic carriage. thing that yeah. just floats there. Because they have Death Stars that's that float. So good. And they have like Millennium Falcons that float. Have you um have you guys seen Making It with uh Nick Offerman and Amy Poehler? No, but I heard it's good. It's fun. It's like a uh, very pleasant. It's a like great British yeah. bake off but with uh Oh yeah, with craft. yeah, you were telling us They about made this. mailboxes last night when we were watching that and somebody made this mailbox that looked like a floating can of red paint pouring out and making <gasps> different shapes on That's the lawn. So it was cool. very cool. That's neat. But something like that for the Baby Yoda thing, where yeah. it looks like it's like maybe he's got like a coat that hangs down. Yeah, and like his jacket all. or something. Yeah. You yeah, do like the like optical the... illusion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what they should do. Magnets, man. Big opinion. Magnets. Yeah. yeah. Bye. Where's the cat? <laughs> <laughs>